Despite the unresolved licensing issues with SD3, developers and the community have not stopped their research. InstantX, the author of Instant ID, has released control net models for Pose, Canny, and Tile compatible with SD3. Additionally, ComfyUI quickly updated to support these models. Notably, it has only been two to three weeks since SD3 was officially released, yet the speed of training and follow-up has been impressive. So, how effective are these models? In this video, I will demonstrate how to download and use these models, and compare them with the corresponding features of SD 1.5 and SDXL. Visiting the author's release page, we can see the three models. Click on the Canny model to view its description, which is quite concise. It's important to note that although it mentions requiring Diffusers version 0.30.0.dev0 or above, we can ignore this requirement since ComfyUI natively supports SD3 control net without relying on diffusers. Remember, do not blindly upgrade this library to avoid conflicts and potential issues with your environment. Now, let's go to the file download page and choose the 1.19 GB file to download. Remember to rename the file after downloading. The pose and tile model files can be downloaded in the same way and placed in this folder. Before using these models, we need to upgrade ComfyUI. You can do this by a git pull or by downloading the compressed package. Ensuring your version is after this commit. With everything ready, let's start. First, load a basic text-to-image workflow for SD3. I'll try to replicate an image I like using Canny and Pose. Add a load image node in the blank space. Select the image. Then add a get image size node to ensure the empty latent dimensions match the original image. Add a control net apply SD3 node. Use WD14 to reverse the prompt since I'm too lazy to write one. Input it into the clip text and code and then pass it to apply control net. Add a load control net model node. Select the newly downloaded SD3 pose. Connect the VAE. And add a DW pose estimator as the pose model requires a preprocessor. Set the resolution to 1024. When applying a single control net, keep the weight below 0.7 to prevent image distortion. And set the exit time earlier for better image quality. Click Run, speed it up. And you can see the overall result is good, adhering to the reference image, though the hand pose is slightly off, despite the pose analysis being correct in the preprocessor. Next, I'll add Canny to the workflow. Usually, preprocessors use Canny or Canny Edge, but for SD3, line art works better. So I choose realistic line art. Complete the connections. Change the resolution to 1024 and click Generate. Speed up to check the result. The details are richer, but there are some strange elements on the face. This is because when there are multiple control nets, you need to further reduce the weight. I lower the weights of both control nets to 0.45 and set the end time to 0.5. Click Generate again, and the image returns to normal, with improved hand details, though there's a slight blemish on the right arm. I'm not being picky, but ControlNet was much more stable in previous versions. Here's a comparison workflow I set up for SD3, SD1.5, and SDXL ControlNet. 
using only pose and canny with the same reference image and seed as before, with optimal weights and parameters for each version. Click Run, Speed Up to see the results. At first glance, they all look fine. Comparing with the original image, SD 1.5 and SDXL closely follow the control net input, while SD 3, though more realistic, has some flaws, likely due to its conservative censorship mechanism clashing with control net. Of course, this image is extremely challenging for SD3. For architecture, landscapes, and regular portraits, its performance is acceptable. For those needing fine control over SD3 generated images, ControlNet is still essential. From DIT's architecture, SD3's ControlNet integrates into the main diffusion process, allowing for more detailed and effective control. The current results may be due to model issues. According to the author, these models are still in the early stages and lack sufficient computational resources and training data. So imperfections are normal. We look forward to future improvements. That's all for today's video. The download links for the models will be in the description. See you next time.